Hi guys, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Mashan Podcast. I'm very, very, very excited for this episode. I'm also very grateful for who is on our show because literally I messaged her and most people, obviously everyone's really kind about coming and all of that, but most of the time, you know, we don't have time. And uh, especially when we haven't committed to something or we aren't obligated to go somewhere. And I told her what this is about. I told her that I would love to have her and she's here. She is uh, one of the most talented actresses of this country. And the most... <laughs> okay, now she's laughing. <laughs> so it's okay. Sana, Saeed. Wow. Oh, we're going to laugh through this, yeah, right? Will, but okay, no! <laughs> no, no, obviously it'll get more... It will. Actually, you know what I was worried about? Get, what? I was like, shit, Sanam's coming and we're both going to cry Crying. through this. Yeah. But no. But I don't think we will. I don't, yeah. yeah. We're not, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. <laughs> and if we do, it's okay. Even, yeah, even it's if we lost. do, it's okay. Yeah. It's lost. Okay, so yeah. So I, like I was saying, and I really mean this, Sanam, and I want to say it over here so that people who are watching and listening, that I'm actually truly grateful for you to be here. Uh, because, uh, you know, like, I mean, of course, like very rarely, you know, will message someone on my own or whatever, but I knew that... We all actually wanted you here. We've heard you talk about loss mm-hmm. before. Um, we've heard you very bravely actually talk about it. I've seen this one interview of yours where you, you know, and I could tell that Sanam. I don't know why everyone says that though. I'm sure if there's so many people who have bravely faced death and loss and massive changes in of life. Of course, and yes, you're right. Actually, you everyone's know? actually been brave about their yeah. loss. But you know what? For a public personality hmm. to sit there. And you know this. When we write something small or we say something about our own personal life, then we know what we're about to get into, right? Because we open it from one side. We're already sort of... Mopad open box. Yeah. And yeah. we're also actors. Yeah? We're like naked that. in front of the audiences, right? We're like there in HD, like all out. So what we want to protect is ourselves. Our personal lives. Yeah. And there are times that we open up at the risk of being judged and trolled and, you know, cr- being criticized. And you somehow, and I tell you what it is about yeah. that interview, okay, for me at least. You did it with, I don't know, there was a grace about it. There was no, like, there was no, like, I'm, I don't know, I didn't feel like she's, she, you were just saying it in a way. But I felt like that about all the... I think, really? I think the host just got out. Yeah, she, Gia was amazing. This really natural... It was like a therapy yeah. session for everyone. Yeah, and yeah. it's because it's her yeah. that everyone just naturally opened up and uh, just spoke their hearts out. I don't think... I've, I've never seen such intimate never. interviews of anyone. Never. And everyone either broke down yeah. or really delved into their personal yeah. family yeah. history and yeah. issues and lives and yeah. highs and lows and... So I think because I'd seen a few of us and I saw that it was this comfortable yeah. space to be in. Forget that. I want to I wanna talk to you about loss. Mm-hmm. You've experienced probably what we say in, like, generally, p- probably the biggest loss a human being can face in their lifetime. More than a parent losing a child? The second. The second, second to that. I don't think that should be allowed. No, I'm, I'm serious. Mm-hmm. My friend who lost uh, a sister, I remember his fa- her father was crying yeah. and was angry with God. And you know, Sana, all he kept saying was, Why not sub- me? Nee, no, sub theek hai. Sub hai. Everything should be allowed. Life, de- life and death, oh, everything. But, but this is one thing that should be a rule. Ye dastur hona chahiye ki a parent should a not, parent should not their see their child go. So that should be... So yeah, no, nothing compares to that. But tell me, um, take me through whatever you can, whatever you feel comfortable Mm -hmm. with about losing your mom. I've got this bimari or this uh, habit, bad habit, coping mechanism, whatever you want to call it, of comparing myself to others a lot. In not in uh, in a insecure way, but like to be grateful Okay, at least it wasn't that bad. People have it worse. People have it worse. And so I'd had several friends who had lost people in an accident. 
there's nothing worse that I can think of, of not being able to say goodbye. Yeah. That, if I had been through that, I don't think I would have been that strong. Any of us would have been able to uh, deal with it, accept it, cope with it, uh, not be angry with God. You know, there would have been a lot of confusion there. But we really had our time to um, say goodbye, our time to make up for the things that we hadn't done over the years, our time to be grateful, our time to uh, be appreciative, and our time to bond. And uh, I, that, that was a game changer. I mean, it wasn't an instant, it was, it was a year. But there was a lot of nursing and taking care. When you see someone so impressive and so larger than life be so weak and sick, we would pray, I'd pray for her to just go because it's, this is no way to, and the, the departed souls are in eternal bliss and peace. So let's call it selflessness, or that's how I view death also as the people who are left behind that you feel bad for. Yeah. Feel bad for my dad. Yeah. You know, when I was imagining, so I felt bad for my younger siblings, like, you know, my sister was only 27. Yeah. My, my dad, his partner of 30, uh, well, three then, 33, 34 years, then it was a good marriage, you know. They were yeah, friends, it was, and it was so we had um, a, a great role models for for a functional. Jhampe chik chik bhi hoti hai, but dosti bhi hai. But there was a really good bond. They were friends. Um, so I I was thinking about my dad, my brother, my sister. I was like, I'll be okay. People have lost a lot more. It's, but and and just seeing her sick. If it, if it had panned out differently, I don't know how I would have taken it, but she'd lost a lot of weight, she couldn't swallow, she was really weak, and she was in pain. The yeah, cancer she... had taken over so much that cancer patients are just in perpetual uh, lethargy, fatigue, and a lot and of pain. pain, pain. So you just want that person to be out of it. But I do remember that, because she'd had it the first time in her late 50s, seven years earlier she'd had it, um, and then she did the mastectomy and she did chemotherapy, radiation. And mentally, she was like, I'm going to fight this. This, is not, this doesn't end here. And um, the second time when it happened, because you go through that, you go through the remission, and then you're hoping for a new lease on life. You, you go, you get over the weak bones, you get over the depression and the medication that messes up with your system. It takes seven years to basically be brand new. And she felt brand new until we just got a test for her because she was a smoker, not that smoking caused it, but right. smoking isn't the best habit. But we just said, up oh, this cough, just go get your lungs right. tested, Vesey. And they, they just came back and they were like, you have stage four cancer. And I remember that, in, that news was, it was just like, oh no, not again. I just not go through that stress and that medication. And it wasn't that bad the first time the treatment but it was just like just not that trauma again any kind of trauma of someone having a life-threatening disease she gave up mentally because she was also like I, I just can't I didn't expect she didn't expect it she didn't because want because I this. remember she I mean at least what I remember yeah. is that those th before that the first time it happened she was like fierce fierce yeah yeah but so it's when she mentally checked out she's like and then we were like not the chemo chemo didn't save her the first time so why should we do it the second time? It makes you sick. It makes you lose your hair. It's not a great feeling. Yes, yeah. And it comes back. So we really got into a lot of uh, alternative medication um, because we'd heard miracle stories. I had a friend in Australia whose friend had had it, was given two months, but then changed his diet and then lived longer. And, but when you have to you can't stop that. But as us as family members, we were like, okay, we'll do everything we can to do it the alternative way with full intentions. But the person fighting it has to have the, the, the strength and the intention to fight it. There came a point where I realized we are just forcing her for ourselves. So when that realization happened, uh, then I was like, no, we have to let her go because she is suffering and we can't be groping at these strings for ourselves. For ourselves. Because, because we're forcing her to eat this and forcing her to have milk thistle and patani yakni and no sugar and no carbs and no meat and no dairy and she was just like you know this is going to kill me and we were like and, but we'd fight a lot then because it was just like we're fighting for your life here so you shush and you have it and she'd be very upset so if, if you regrets the name but next like with my grandmother i see this is someone who has got one foot in the door yeah. let them live yeah. how they want to live yeah. 
So that's a lesson. So if it happens with anyone else next time, I won't force them to live for me or for us. But is this... It, is this you? Did you think this? Did it, was it just My you? father didn't think this. Yeah, the three so of us did, I think. The, so you all three of you thought this. Well, we didn't want to do the chemo. And it was like a joint because like Yeah, like a, my brother was be researching the uh, what is milk the, the cultures mm. uh, in Sweden or something and then my pop would be arranging and we'd get it. Amira would be my sister would be preparing meals. Uh, we'd be doing the bathing. I mean, everyone was very involved. My dad would so we were all very involved, but my father wanted uh, yeah, the, the chemo and the radiation. Because he had a, they had a friend going through it at the same time. He's still alive. But we had another friend, I mean, my sister's friend's dad, who was a motivational speaker, very healthy, very conscious of his food, went through all kinds of high-tech um, treatment in the U.S. He died three weeks before my mother. So it was like, wh- which do one do? do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then you realize that you've got to do, at some point, especially at this stage, really what will make that person... you got to brace yourself for loss. Yeah, you ha- exactly, exactly. So, okay, so, so tell me about, like, the grieving period, right? Because grief is, it's crazy. Um, it's universal, like we were talking, but it's so personal, so everyone goes through it differently, differently right? Yeah. We all have different coping mechanisms. We all... Like the three of you, for instance, for whatever reason, you guys are born and brought up by the same yeah, parents, but everyone's same different. house, same yeah. everything. But for whatever reasons, probably you guys had different ways to deal with it. Because everyone has a different dynamic also right, with the right. person. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you start grieving from before she she went, you think? Or, or did it start way after that? No, we or were in you, denial. I didn't think she'd die. You were, oh, you were in denial. Yeah. I, she was fine, her oxygen levels would drop. I actually was away for work. She was back from the hospital after 10 days. 10 days in the hospital, we were like, okay, so the hospital's taking care of her, her oxygen levels are fine, she's been pumped up with IVs and stuff for strength and everything, and, and we'd spent 10 grueling days at the hospital. So we came back home, and I had to finish six days of cake oh, I remember in London. This. I remember you telling the story of a, in, at some premiere, I was in... I was there. Yeah, so, yeah, cake was that. She was away and I was... And so, I I didn't think that would happen. Uh, Now, my brother and sister would have a different version because they were there when she... When I was away and they'd have to go back and they saw it's not getting better. But they didn't tell me. So, I finished work and then they were like, when you land, just come straight to the hospital. Then I was... Okay, so then I was... Then it hit me. I was like... But I had done cake where I already let... The, it's just really weird. So my loss, my work helped me with loss because I cried real tears. I broke down in it with real emotion in the film. And that's exactly what my character was going through, a divorce and the loss of a mother. So I was really lucky in a weird way that I, I got that catharsis or I got to take it out and then be ready to face the family and be solid for the family. And everyone feels that way. I got to be, you know, my siblings probably felt we got to be okay for Baba, or we got to be okay for each other, or whoever. Um, so I think, yeah, when they, when, when that call came about, come straight to the hospital. That's when I was like, oh, oh. really? Okay, so, so it's bad, but, but okay, you know, she's just in the hospital and it's not good, but okay. Um, and they came to pick me up, and we don't pick each other up from the. Uh, airport, we just make our own way, but my friends and my siblings, well, my brother, I think, or my sister, they came to pick me up, and everyone's like, shh, and I was like, what, what's happening? Everyone was very quiet. So I had no idea. They were like, I was like, okay, so they were like, okay, it's time. I was like, chalo, so go sort out the bill, and let's go. And that's when my brother was like, no, no, it's time to pull the plug, because she was on the ventilator. And I mean, I'm, if the joke about me or me, my star sign or just generally is stone cold, okay, heart of ice, because uh, I don't express my emotions too much or I, I don't know if I allow myself to ride the wave of every emotion, whether it's love or anger, like I don't have a temper, which is not healthy. You should have a temper. Yeah, yeah. Anger, sadness, um, anything so I I, on a very low frequency 
um, bounce back on these emotions. So I was like, I don't know what mode I went into, but I mean, I and again, being an actor or being so impressed or um, living in the movies constantly, it was a movie scene. You know, I'd always seen it in the movies when somebody is passing away, you lie down next to them, you hold them, you talk to them. If you can hear me, move your eyeball, <laughs> squeeze my hand. And that's what I was doing. I was like, if you, I'm here now, we're all here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was peaceful doing that. So if she had passed away before I got to do that, I would have really regretted going to work. But I guess I would have been like, maybe there was a reason for that to save me from that trauma because I'm not, because maybe, I mean, shoulda, coulda, woulda, I'm just glad that, and they kept saying, and you know, she's waiting. She's waiting for her brood to be together. And I've never seen my dad cry. And he didn't. I still have never seen him cry. He got up for a second. He went to the bathroom. I think he let it out there. And that's when I, uh, that's when my heart broke, was for him. Because a, a partner is of 33 years. And, and yeah, I think that was the tough part for my dad. But within seconds of her passing away, us noting the time, we were OK, I think. It was just that saying goodbye, that final goodbye. There was my brother, my sister, my uncle, two of my best friends who were very close to my mother. They, um, we just held her, said goodbye, took the mask off. She took her last breaths. There was peace in there. It was obviously a very selfish, um, selfish is the wrong word to use. It's just loss, you know, acknowledging that we are now losing this person and the longing and the want for that person to live on. Um, but the moment they announced the time, it was like, okay, Janaza, okay, call Mamu, okay, let Mamu know, okay, we got to call people, and you go, and it happens. I've been to funerals, I've, friends have lost parents or someone, and they are totally in. Isn't it crazy, though? It's like how your, your mind yeah. sort of just... Protects you. It just protects you. Actually, denial also is a way of... Um, your brain sort of coping with the sadness and yeah. the pain, right? Because it's like, oh, God, I won't be able to take it, so it hasn't... But I don't know, like... And uh, I know I don't want to, like, get into y you or, or how you are, but I feel, because I've known you forever, I mean, you know, you are, you... I feel like you think of everybody else before yourself, and that's probably because you're the eldest, you were always like that, always been that you know like that person who as the eldest know. I think naturally yeah but I then my sister's like that she yeah, think of everyone like, before yeah, everyone yeah yeah and uh, but that's also because your mom was like my mother was like that you know yeah. I have met her very few times in my life but enough enough mm -hmm. times to actually it's so strange with your mom and everybody has a story with your mom right yeah Everybody, yeah. anybody you will ever meet who even knew her for like a little bit, they have a story to tell about your mom. She was such a... Larger than larger life. Larger than life. Like all three of you combined are not... No, don't. Yeah, exactly. How? I don't know. All three of you combined yeah. don't have... Like there was that this... That gusto and that this, power this and that... This power, this presence. Yeah. And she always had something good to say. Always. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't a negative Nancy. She didn't complain. She hates it when people complain. Yeah, she was just such a, you know. So I think somewhere, like you said, that when someone like that becomes, you know, becomes dependent on other people, when someone like that is in so much yeah. pain, yeah. I think somewhere you start, even as, as a child or as, you know, as a friend or whatever, you start feeling like just... Yeah, you can't see someone like that. You, yeah. Maybe yeah. if someone, if you have a dependent parent or a dependent sibling or anyone, then you, maybe it's harder because they've always been that way. And so you're just like, you, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not, exactly. No, not no. someone, to see someone fall or crumble or not be themselves. Kisi ka mohtaj hona is, which is why it's yeah. the biggest fear of the elderly. Ke yeah. kisi ka mohtaj na kisi ka, Exactly. Because yeah. that is what happens, yeah. right? 
like anyway coming back so so you go through this period of denial right i was reading about loss i had a therapist before you who was talking about loss and they said you know there are all these stages okay psychologists have come up with all these stages there's denial there's anger and then there's bargaining where they sort of try mm. to make sense of it all like if i had done it but then if that mm. had you know all of that yeah and then there's the real where you where you actually go through the real acceptance you know it's the sadness the, sadness, the, pain, the grief the grief the real grief yeah and then there's acceptance which is also not yeah. a happy so no it doesn't yeah exactly yeah. but did you like you said and i've seen you i've never seen you like i've never seen you angry angry right and then i've also never seen like i'm cuz my mother had enough anger and she was very she was a like a hot headed woman nice i like no. that vegetarians <laughs> i'm surrounded by yeah i know my some my some my best friends ex partner my mother are all hot headed there's enough hot headed people in my family so you're so just I'll like yeah tender. okay fine but even amira is not so oh. like oh oh <laughs> mm, no one okay fine yeah okay yeah ready and you are the oh ready? oh no i said my whole family is hot headed they all have a temper yeah so i was like that's enough i can't i can't take loud volumes i can't take shouting yeah you can't are take, very can't. like there's no point i'm like it's not helping you hussa is just it doesn't make sense to me it's like you're a fool to be angry silly i mean i've got it all wrong but no, it's you haven't got it all meaning wrong, uh, being angry is not a bad thing it's you need to because everyone experiences right grief loss yeah, anger happiness yeah, sadness yeah. they're all emotions that we naturally experience yeah. and yes everyone deals with them differently but to bottle up and just it'll it'll come out somewhere yeah it'll come out somewhere yeah. which is why i do gussa rolls the best but that's what an actor that is so f- yeah that that's that the beauty is so of acting true. The, but that that's is what actors a lot of actors are shy awkward people who what is the joy of acting yeah. you get to do you get what to you do, can't do you can't do that is but so your character true. does it that is so true and which i know crying is one thing that doesn't is not easy for me to do in dramas, in dramas or yeah. work yeah. which is why cake was so amazing because it was real yeah the only time it's been but real but it, so it was odd. i mean i know this is not about your acting but that last scene I don't know if that was, was just, just real. Oh, but what is that? And it just charged into your face, you know? It just kept going. I think Asim also knew because everyone knew that my, you know, I'd taken these these 6 days were sensitive. Although that was in London, we shot that before, but they knew that I'd had a, yeah. I had a yeah, sick yeah, mother yeah. for that year. But um yeah, different so I know I don't feel anger like that. And um so you didn't you didn't feel angry at any point? What is that to feel angry about? At God for taking her? Whatever. There's a, there's no. a, there's a s- life death is a very I mean it's just really a huge part. It is life. There is it's there's no escaping it. So I think I'm all weird like that. I used to think what if so and so died? What would I feel? Uh, why am I asking myself that? But I would and I'd be like I'd be okay because it's it's God's choice. He created Yeah. that person and, and it's his time to take and the only thing is life and death and there's nothing the afterlife whatever it is yeah it's way better than this hopefully yeah for sure whether it's eternal peace whether you it's a party it up is. there yeah. whatever it is yeah. you know hell and heaven is right here mm. so it's uh, that person who's passed into the other realm is how i see it is just eternal peace whatever state they're in um So so you didn't you didn't so you, so you went into denial but not necessarily I didn't feel anger I did grieve anger. I I was being the big sister I just really felt you know my younger siblings my my brother had a very uh, all ma beton ka jo rishta hai it's something else there's nothing it's crazy. that intense yeah, and crazy true. and yeah. intimate and uh, there's so much love and anger there uh, between a mother and son so they definitely had something going on there that i was just like okay they need to get peace with this so a good thing was that i did go away for the 6 days because my my siblings were some were and some weren't avoiding it ah. escaping it um so, so when i wasn't time, there when three right when one is not there then the other the one has to step over, in because yeah. one can't take care yeah. of it on their own yeah. so that did give him time i think um and then i think i don't uh, i one escaped afterwards one just left a little while after that but i think they just needed to get out of the house i stayed back and i think in a way that helped me deal with an empty like 
getting used to her not being around mm. my dadi also moved in with us when my yeah. mother got sick yeah. so the mother figure the mother hen figure it sort of she sort of replaced it. yeah there wasn't you know in some houses there's a the loss is so huge because there's a one you know one left the cuckoo's nest but we were still five nice. you know a mother figure and then the children yeah. So coming back so it wasn't like it was a completely empty sort of yeah nest, nest. like my mother like i mean you know nothing in the world can replace anybody but you know what i mean like but, but one but person less it it does affect it does. like I, I, it does. and i uh, another friend recently before my mother not recently but at that time recently had lost um her father in an accident the kids were already abroad so the mother was alone and i was like you know my dad has got his mother here all three children live in the house Shali. it's not like hum yeah. log shaadi karke gaye aa gaye aur ab uh-huh. khali ghar hoga right you know right. that's a huge is last point huge that thing. we all live together we all still had each other um a mother figure was there to take care of her son and her grandchildren yeah. and uh, and then everyone had their own way of dealing with it i do believe my relationship with god made it more practical um so there was no shikayat there was no gussa there was no it was like that's just she's not the only one who's died you know there are people who die all the time but that's the coldness that i'm talking about it's, it's too practical it's your mother for god's sake you know like so the only really griefing griefing um the only my moment of grief was that moment the pulling of the plug moment saying goodbye because now the life is left the body so that leaving was traumatic no but the most intense uh, emotion that i felt the rush of emotion yeah. after that um there were so many friends and family and one thing my mother said i don't want a funeral why because her belief was from what she had learned or whatever is that you only your children can pray for your magfirat your parents and your children okay so this uh, concept of everyone coming dressing in their sunday best the right. funeral best and she didn't want that. dropping beads and yeah. gossip i mean right. baatein ho rahi hain bilkul focus nahi hai you know i mean you're right. there to pay your respects but of course everyone's so distracted right. she didn't want that so she said if there must be a uh, you know i want my children to pray for me you better pray for me and my uh, her parents had passed away but like my dadi or whoever but she didn't want white chadars beads she didn't want that but we felt that uh, it's such a cultural thing um and it's something that other people need that because other people need to grieve so we need to allow other people to come and feel better to say a prayer for her yeah. but it just so happened because that white chadar wasn't spread out and which is what is nice about some other funerals where you have eulogies you get to celebrate the person yeah so that was really nice having people of that that's so true there were no white yeah. chadars you don't get the opportunity to there was to, like we were like We were sitting in each other's rooms Rooms outside chai yeah, meeting people yeah. and it wasn't a social affair where you're mindlessly dropping beads and praying but your dehan is somewhere else yeah. your dehan was on this person yeah. and who she was yeah. and the funeral was really nice like that those three days of people bringing khana checking up on us um friends and every single person whether it was her students um an old driver any old staff the neighbors old neighbors anyone who came they had a story to tell about yeah. her and that helped the family a yeah. lot to remember her in this she lived fully yeah she really i mean again you can correct me if i'm wrong what i understood was that she lived fully and she said that and so when she was ill she said and she went for hajj also she wanted to go for hajj and we were like mm, and baba <laughs> was like i don't do but nan was like but when she got sick first thing did baba took her for hajj he's like okay and uh, when she'd come back from hajj then she had just felt like i've done it all america mein padh ke aa gayi thi sara kar liya teen bacche paida kar liye bade ho gaye wo zimmedari unki khatam ho gayi thi great husband family everything was done she buried her parents so she was done she's like aur kya tum log pata nahi grandchildren doge nahi doge but that's the next step that's right? what that's, being a grandparent that's, yeah, yeah. that's what you've got to live right, for then right. otherwise she's like i don't see that happening in the near future so i'm done i'm ready And I was like, "If you're ready, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because you Try know what? The, I have this idea of death. Okay, mm. I have this idea, and I, by the way, also romanticize it. I do not. I'm not. Yeah, I can feel when I think about it. Someone, someone close to me going, it breaks me. But I just feel. I do feel like there are times where 
I'll be at a party dancing, you know, and I'm Amira is here, and like there have been times where we've been dancing, me and Amira, and we have danced and thought of her best friend who passed away. We all know, mm-hmm. and just you know, blown kisses to the sky and hugged each other and a tear here or there, but somehow just like, like you know, just celebrating. Celebrating, yeah. Because I truly believe, like, when you, I think death comes to you when you are sort of sad, like you're like, I don't know, in a moment of kind of peace with yourself. But I don't know if that's true. But when I think about Ruha, for instance, mm. I think of so many things. There are just so many things. She was apple picking and she was here. You, like, think about everything. And I think, I have a feeling that she was just happy. Like, Happy, yeah. Just, I feel, you know, you do you know what I mean? Like I kept, I used to keep thinking because it broke all of us. I mean, that's not something you want to see, right? A 21-year-old, yeah. a baby to go. But there was something about opening that bag and seeing that all she had was a chapstick and a $5 bill. And this was her, this was her, yeah. like, the perfect setting what in which she must have, sort of flourish, you know? Oh. I don't know. I don't know why I think like that. Maybe again, it's a, it's a co- thought. It's a way of coping mechanism. Yeah. Maybe it is a coping mechanism. Maybe it makes us feel better, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and I, to leave a good memory and not be, yeah, bogged down by the weight of the tragedy of it, if you think of it that way. Because at the end of the day, it is it tragic, is. right? For yeah. a parent or even for a child to lose their, their parent. Anyway, coming back to loss. Um, we won't get into it too much, but we, both of us have, and I, I feel like it, there was a point where we both sort of connected, reconnected, and it was when I had gone through my separation, my divorce, but I think you were going through separation. I'm not, I'm not mm. sure actually, what, you know, if I do, I'm not sure exactly what was happening, but I know that there was something which was not right, and I don't remember we both there was a there was a moment of us connecting backstage at an award show. Just understanding. Just sort of yeah. Be like, I know what you're going through, I know what you're going yeah, through. And yeah, and you came to me and you were like, you know, you know when I when when I spoke to you then I didn't understand what you you had said, but you know, I get it. And you didn't need to tell me that something was wrong. Mm. You never said it. I just was like, it can only be when you've gone through it yourself, then you can pick up on signs pick or pick up, up on, on someone's signs. vibe yeah. or someone's yeah yeah so and I, and again for this i was reading a lot about loss and otherwise also i keep thinking about this that you know there are people who've lost friendships old childhood friendships people have lost uh partners you know people have lost their entire businesses. I've seen that also, yeah. which has been... Especially in these times. Especially in these times. I just... And, and there, there are times when you, when, I, when you read things, and I've been reading a lot, especially because I went through something very recently where I was like, oh, i got to get into it, you know, the psychology behind it. And I was reading that, you know, okay, yeah, there is loss, there's death. But because there's a finality to it, mm-hmm. because you... Yeah. So when people break up, they're like, death would have been easier because at least it's gone. Yes. For so some, you are like, yeah, okay, well, the so you tell your yeah. mind, and you, or your mind tells you that, you know what, he, this is life. This is life. Yeah. There is life and death. It is inevitable. This is what's going to happen. And so it happened. I saw it go down. I have my closure. Yeah. At least in my mind, and like my entire body knows that it's gone. When you lose a person... Just before I lose a point to bring that back, when you yeah. said that you've seen them, you were talking yeah. about that you've buried yes, them. You've buried them. No. I know they say women can't go to the graveyard. Yeah. But there was a history to that because women would be beating their chest and they yes, can't emotionally yes, control yes, yes, themselves. And yes. so in order to not have them breaking down and crying right. and just be really emotional, the men who, again, again, that concept of boys don't cry is ingrained yes. in that. Yes. Uh, we were like, we are going to the graveyard. So when there was a, a, a dua happening, as the men had gone to take my mother to the graveyard, m- my sister, myself, and two of our best friends were like, no, no, we're going. So I think we were in touch with 
two of our friends there, or my brother, no, my brother's busy, but we, had, we were in touch to be like, okay, tell us when, and we're coming, cause, and I felt that was so important. It is because of what you said. You, you have to see the person go back in, or where they belong, or where we put them, to bury them. Yeah. Yes. I had to see that. Otherwise, it's like, oh, she's left the house, she'll be back. No. There would have been that have confusion. To, it's, yes. So I, I do believe that this is, uh, there's no, uh, in blood women cannot women go. Cannot, it's a cultural thing. It's, it is absolutely a cultural and thing. It's a patriarchal thing, actually. Sorry. It is. Yeah. It for is, them to is. decide who, who can handle their emotions or not. Right. But I think it's very important. If anyone is listening and if anyone can benefit from this, if you lose someone, go to the graveyard. Yes, it is important. It gives you closure. I remember when my father had passed away and that was, you know, I was talking to the girl who came before them, I'm not sure. But Sana was my first step, first mm. time that I saw that and felt it and I could mm. not deal with it. I was also obviously young, mm. but that was my, you know, I grew up with them more than my parents. And I... The fact that I saw him go in the hospital, and I was a, I was saying, nahi mujhe ja. I'm going to see my dada, he's waiting for, you know, that kind of a, yeah. you know, like, you know, I want to see him, I want to see him. And my papas were like, don't do this, don't mm. do this. And they kept telling, you know, my father, don't bring her, she will never forget this. It won't, it'll be traumatizing, she won't forget it, she's too young. How old are you? And I wasn't. I was 20 years old. This is oh. before I got married. I thought you were like 10. Then I'd be no, like, oh, maybe but, not but we had 20. not gone through, you know, the right, right. Whole, right? Yeah. They were like, oh, she's so young. No, 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 don't. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. fine. I was like, no, I'm going to go. Good. So I went to the hospital. And then when he came, I remember I sat next to him and I kept whispering and talking to him. I didn't understand at that time death, the etiquettes of it, mm-hmm. or whatever, however mm-hmm. they say. And I remember... One of the older women over there kept, kept, and I could hear her, kept saying, you know, what, look what you... Even, and I'm so glad I did it. I did it out of, you know, pain and anger also, and out of rebellion, I think, somewhat. Yeah. But I was like, no, I'm going to sit with him, and I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to see him, and I'm going to talk to him. And I was ready to go to the funeral, yeah. you know, to the, to the yeah, graveyard. graveyard. But whatever little... Did you go? No, I, uh-huh. they didn't let me go. They didn't let me go. But I swear, Sanam, that helped me so much. Just as opposed to, to you would have done what? Just sat at home while the badass... As opposed to, you know, and I understand. This is a culture that I, and I get it. But, you know, someone's lying down in a, you know, in a room. There is men separate or women mm. separate and all of that. I wanted to be with him. I just mm. wanted to be around him. I wanted to even... And I, thank God I went to the hospital... As painful as it was to see him like that, it, it did something to me. You have to mind. say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, and it also did something to me. Like, I understood, I clocked it in, that he has to go. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. So, yes. It's, it's, it is important to expose children and people and women yes. to death and not protect them. Because yes. it's an emotion that everyone feels. Yes. Um, and it's important to go through that process. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're there to witness birth, be there to witness death. That's probably the best thing I've heard all day. <laughs> We've been shooting all day. So yeah, so for anybody who's listening, actually, this is, this is actually the best thing that I've heard in a long time. If you are there to witness birth, which is a miracle of life, be there to witness death. Because that also, you know, it's, it's like a full circle. It's a circle of life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, coming back. To like, a relationship a that relationship. you don't bury the person physically. It's yeah. an emotion and a time you have to bury. And we don't have the discipline sometimes to, to be like, this is final. Did you have the discipline? My mother's uh, illness and death took over. It was, it was simultaneously happening. So did you deal with, like, I feel like, like I was telling you earlier, I never dealt with my, uh, like, I just, not at that time. I think when you made a decision to part ways, hmm. the build up to that decision is, is what is being done. Yeah. But once you've decided, you've gone through that hmm. um, catharsis, you've gone through that dilemma, you've gone through the pros and cons and the pain and the confusion. When you arrive at a decision, then there's no... I mean, maybe. Maybe for some actually signing that paper is, is, is everything. You don't expect it to happen. Uh, if it wasn't like that for me. I think the decision was the hardest part. Yeah. And then going through with it. Not 
that piece of paper was not no, it was a decision. neither for me yeah. the piece of paper honestly did not um, yeah. yeah it didn't had my mother been okay and all i had to think about was my relationship sure i would have maybe had more to, um thought about it more or maybe grieved about it more but or differently or differently yeah but because uh, my mother's thing happened i think that took over so th- so the your question would be like so then did you ever get time to then address that yeah because i feel like i think that we don't realize it um especially if i mean i'm not here to tell you how you feel but like you know someone like you who have who does not express fully you express but you know for people like me it's not fully right mm-hmm. it's like yeah come on let's go f- all out yeah. you know like yeah. should we should you know that, but if you don't and and there are certain things you don't like you said anger is futile for me so i don't i don't get angry and this is something which is natural for you yeah. it's not something you're saying you actually don't do that and anger is unnatural feel, for me yeah it's unnatural for you right but somewhere like i just feel that we all have these stored sort of memories a body remembers everything forget our mind forget our heart of course our, our body remembers everything right we mm-hmm. have muscle memory and some like i f- like it happens to me i feel like or do you are you that sort of person by the way i have a friend okay mm. he always says he's like when a relationship dies i bury it like i bury like like a person like a guy. person yeah guy. he's like it gets buried i i mean dafan kar deta hu usko men are like that women like to hold on to relationships maybe, maybe. women uh, men can't women love to hold on to relationships ke okay dosti to kisi bhi kisi bhi dosti rahe because you're not a bad person, person that's a, yeah this combination yeah. or this dynamic didn't work but that doesn't mean like i can't enjoy a joke yeah. or reminisce about yeah. something or or i can't ask you but how men you doing? work very differently they operate very differently they need a clean cut yeah because they can't just be friends like that probably yeah that's that's true actually go through any old college experience through a friend or personally yeah. very few um men are able to keep uh, behave like i mean we we'll all have cordial relationships with our exes yeah. but to actually be friends it's weird for men yeah. as i've grown older i realize it's weird in general for human beings when you've been in a different right. type of dynamic right. it's best to yeah actually but that it, way by the way the only time i'm cold hmm. only time is men mean i'm like ha huh? <laughs> yeah really oh yeah yeah <laughs> only that oh. i'll be like bye bye okay cuz they hurt you no. or you hurt no, them no, and no. you're like yeah, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> so anyway but losing people in your life losing friends partners uh, that's what you're yeah. talking about right and how do we feel about that how we deal with oh. loss of a friendship it is yeah like we said earlier it is it's harder to because there's no finality to it and that's what you struggle with but i think that's where the discipline has to i don't know it depends from relationship to yeah. relationship in person yeah. to person is something worth uh holding on to yeah. whether it's a partner or a friendship so uh, sana a mm. common friend that we have she told me something very interesting uh, and very intelligent she is <laughs> she's got these pearls she's, that she she's yeah. got real pearls over yeah. stem you know it's like Ha, ha 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 and then boom and you like experience in life and daughter yeah, yeah so she said you know why you i was talking to her about loss and i was talking to her about relationships and you know stuff like that and she said something so amazing she said why you you know a relationship has to die it's called the death of a relationship mm-hmm. that specific relationship has to be buried mm-hmm. gone everything you take your time to grieve so you grieve grieve mm-hmm. just like you would for someone yeah. you've lost and then she's like if you're lucky you might reconnect and then with the spirit of that person <laughs> <laughs> no, no shut up yeah you take your time to grieve and then if you're lucky we're talking about friends and stuff mm-hmm. like that you know so just mm-hmm. not like ex-husbands okay. and stuff but huh. even then even then you take that time and it's you take that time to grieve and then when you reconnect you actually are starting on a newer f- note so it is the beginning of a new relationship so i'm the queen of that oh really <laughs> yeah like how like um, i i've i've put a lot of relationships friendships to death 
to lay to rest. And then I have no, and then reconnected. And then you and have a great relation. They're still in my life, and we're still close. Yeah. We pick up, but that dynamic. Let's not say that relationship. That dynamic. That dynamic had to yes, die. Yes, that's exactly what yeah. she said. She said, you know, that dynamic yeah. that is causing you or someone else the pain has to die. Yeah, it has to die. It has to die for us for to us realize, to... change, yeah. grow, yeah. and then yeah. So that's happened several times okay. where I am the the worst at that. Worst at that. Because I don't like letting go. Ah. I don't like letting go of a ring. Mm. It it's going to be you know in my body and it'll be hurting me. I just I'm I'm a little bit of a like I, fear of loss. Yeah. So, but with these certain people that I've been through that with, but I've realized by the way at this age, mm. I'm 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 just naturally it's coming like it's just changing. Maybe the ability just, to the ability to say. I okay. think the, uh, like no. with age, the understanding that the loss of a friendship, especially a good one where the dynamic is yeah. not working, yeah. doesn't mean it's not death. It's not death. So the, uh, and yes. I think when we were younger, that understanding wasn't there. It yes. was like, Ab hai, but we've been yeah. mean to each other. We said a few horrible things yeah. and now that's it. I, but when you grow older, that's part of a friendship also. Yeah. I mean, if husband and wife can spat and not want yeah. to speak to each other, friends are allowed to do that too. Absolutely. So I used to think that friends don't, only partners do that. Friends I, I are like... You can't. Bhai ben ko bhi lado, se lado, but friends, you can't do that. If you I say mean things to friends, it's over. It's over. That's, so that's what I used to yeah. think. I, I still actually, to some level, I'm like, oh, but friends? No, but friends. Yeah, but no, it's very no. healthy too, because that's what a healthy relationship yeah. is. And actually, if you look around while you're growing up, or you even now, as adults, of course, we have childhood friends, and then we choose some friends, mm -hmm. you know, when we're older. And you realize that those, why do those friendships work better? Just because you were older, so the mechan you know, yeah. the dynamics, and and all of that is of this age. You haven't been through that kind of loss because you can't let go. Yeah, yeah, I no, oh. I have now. I think somewhere in the these few years, but yeah, I I don't usually go through that. I'm very. Yeah, even when people want to go through that, mm. like I feel like yeah. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, when you have a like when you break up or, or something, right? I have this idea of okay, we've made this decision, but but what? But relax, yeah. Why do you have to cut off ties and all of that? Because some people live. So, and I realize yeah. that now that you know everybody is different, and everybody needs their own way to however they want to deal with with a relationship going sour or astray or whatever you want to say. Yeah, it's like. You know, it's like how we're saying, we deal with loss differently. differently. We deal with actually everything dif differently, you know. So somewhere, I, now I think I have gone through some, some a few things where, where I've had to, where I've had to understand that I, I need to let go. Hmm. So you're afraid to lose things. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you think you learn things from your entire session on because you've dealt you've been talking to counselors coaches and friends mm -hmm. who have gone through loss so hopefully you learn something <laughs> yeah. that's the point for the listeners yeah, also actually. to like yes, connect yes, yes. and i have feel I, and, I have i have yeah and i think um i think because again again i'll tell you something very i mean i don't know personal or whatever but I, my mother went through, when we were young, my mother went through a loss of a friend. Mm. So, so, so I saw that while growing up and I saw her in pain because of that, right? It was completely external circumstances, nothing between them. Mm. They're still the best of friends now. Oh, not a death. Not a, a death. loss of a friendship. It was uh -huh. like this loss of a friendship and that was, you know, the house she grew up in, the house that she went to, you know, and we went to and all of that. And... Uh, and I had made up my mind that I would never, never lose a friend. Uh. I had made up my mind about several things, you know. But natural, up. because what else natural. do you have to look up to? Absolutely. Yeah. So you sort of decide that this is not what I'm going to do. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick this up from my parents. This is not. And I did that. And that at a very, very early age, like 11 or 12. Yeah. And it was a very set thing in my mind. And that lasted forever. Like forever. Like, you know, even when I was like sort of, parting ways with, you know, with my ex-husband, I kept thinking, 
yeah, I'm doing the right thing. I am doing the right thing because I told myself that I'm not going to stay in something which... Mm. I mean, there were many other reasons. This was not, yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah. was not the reason. But all those things, and now I feel that I'm sort of unlearning all of that. I'm, you know, I'm allowing myself to sort of... And if you hadn't gone, if we hadn't gone through those experiences, then we wouldn't have come out seeing it from the other side yeah. and growing and learning. I think we've we've covered a lot, and I think, honestly, like you are, you keep saying, "Why am I brave and why is?" Because you just you are. Not a lot of people do it as authentically as you do. But then and that's also like wrong of me to say. <laughs> but it's true, you know. I honestly, we all, we all. Why we cried right now? That wasn't brave. That was a natural emotion. No, it's brave to cry, oh, it's brave man. To cry. It's so super brave to cry. Um, but anyway, coming back, one last thing. I had a friend who recently lost her dad and she had posted something on uh, online where she had said she had said a few things um, but one of the things that she had said it was it was an emotional post it was it seemed like it was coming from a place of pain but also from a place of anger mm-hmm. and she said something in that where she she mentioned how people mourn or how people actually condole yeah okay and she said you know what if you have you if you have all this all this 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 stuff to say don't say it don't to do me. it okay? i'm sorry and for your loss and, and, and don't, like, like just generic she, stuff yeah or? generic stuff and she was like if you're going to tell me if you're going to message me if you're not going to and she also felt that not a lot of people had gone you know maybe for because of covid or whatever mm. but she just felt like don't don't send me a message saying how are you doing don't ask me, you know, how, how have you been or what's up? And so I was asking the therapist uh, this morning that what are the etiquettes? Mm. Or are there any etiquettes? What is it? Like you've gone through it, right? Did you ever... It's think- funny. I used to think at funerals, I don't know what to say. What can you say? What so can just you say? my press, I'm there. My, I'll just show up at funerals, which I also thought is very silly. Like you really don't need a house filled of extra people. You go up to someone and you're like, yeah. Okay, I was like, oh, that's so weird. <laughs> and so when it happened, I was like, oh, Allah, how are people going to say to me? And I'm not going to judge them. We were like, thanks for coming. Right. So when people did come and say, I'm sorry, or give a hug, uh, it was, and that part was fine. Now when I condole, uh, still, like it's like you condole first, you went through it. Has my stance or my way of condoling changed? No, it's the same. Really? What can you say? What can you do? That's what, so that's what I'm asking. Like, it is, is confusing. A, it, it is confusing. One I, friend of mine uh, condoled a year, a year and three months later, and she was really embarrassed, and I said, it's okay. She's like, I just didn't know what to say. I was like, the fact that you're saying it now, it's, I appreciate it, yeah. and I would not have not appreciated if you didn't, because you don't, like, just like this friend of yours said, you don't want to say, because you know it can be a little annoying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. I hope, you know, you... Mu boli hum log bahut keh dete hain ke Allah unko jannat... Bless him, yeah. bless him. But saying bless nothing... Her. Yeah. You don't know what to say. It, it is a very um, intimate, a very uh, tricky time for that person. And so you just want to wish them well. And so... and In fact, two weeks later or a few days later, asking someone how they're doing, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay, so... um. We're going to wrap this mm-hmm. up. But before we wrap this up... <laughs> What's coming? No, nothing. Oh. It's not a rapid fire on launch. <laughs> Are you saying it? Rapid fire. Tears. I No, no, it's not. I just... For everybody who's listening, I mean, your voice is... Of course, we've had amazing people and specialists on this, you know, where who specialize in all their own... You know, there was a therapist, there's a child psychiatrist, there's so many people. But your voice means something. It matters. I want you to sort of, if we, you could sort of sum it up for anybody who's listening, who's going through a painful time right now, whether it's loss of a partner or a friend or a, or a loved one, a death, whatever it may be, or business or a job. Can you sort of... I know, I know it's this huge sort of thing. Only because I'd just be too um, insensitive in a way. You know, just be like, deal with it. Deal with it, which is just so wrong. Um, no, it's not. It is what no, you, you how you are. But I would like you to... Look, 
you may not be able to take something out of what you said mm. and tell me right mm. now, but I can because mm. I've been listening to you. And it's not, it's not deal with it. N- go through it. Yeah. Go through it. Ride that wave. Take your time. And uh, whether it's God, namaz, prayers, therapy, friends, articles, um, group therapy, whatever it is, I think find your preference of how to deal with grief because keeping it inside you get um, stress is a huge cause of cancer and other diseases so if you don't let it out it shows like how you said your body stores it so it manifests in psoriasis eczema some kind of stress related um, disease so that is important to let out only because you got to keep yourself okay the person who's gone is gone but there's so many other people left behind that you have to And I know people get annoyed by saying, you have to be okay for the family. You have to be okay for yourself and because you're the ones who are living and left behind. So you've got to, you know, there's three days of grieving and then you move on. You uh, don't indulge in it for too long. Indulging in it and dealing with it are two very different things. And I feel often, from what I've seen, some people indulging in it and letting themselves really be drowned in that sorrow and that depression and that grief. And that can get dangerous for your mental health. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and your physical absolutely. health. Um, so dealing with, and again, like I said, my experience, I got to say goodbye. I don't know how I would have dealt with it if it was sudden. But therapy, that's where therapy, you need to go for therapy. I think anyone who's lost someone very violently or tragically or suddenly, grief needs to come out. Yeah. And, and, And like you said, I think that one of the best things you've said right now is that go through it. Like, just allow yourself to experience it. Because it's an emotion that is a natural emotion that we all will feel or go through. So you have to. Right. But don't indulge. I mean, again, like for for me or you just sit here again, we can't say much. Right. Because we've all dealt with our own little experiences and we are speaking out of experience. But um, I think one of the best things you said, and I think this specific episode, yes, it's about, we talked about, mm. we've talked about all kinds of loss, but I think today's focus mainly was really you losing a loved one. Mm. And I think one of the best things you said, and I don't know, I like a good line, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the film people in us, the, the artists in us. The dialogue every, that sticks yeah, out. Yeah, the dialogue that sticks out is really that if you are there to witness birth in all its glory, then, you know, be there to witness death and really just take it in. And, and yeah, it'll come with all its sadness and grief. Yeah. But Even, I mean, just because recently I've misplaced or lost, I lose a lot of things at home. Or story <laughs> oh. And there are certain things, there was one ring of my mother, for example, I was like, Ye to, I this can't is, lose. Yeah, it, I just, yeah, this will yeah, not happen. Yeah. I lost it. And so... Because I'd worked myself so much, I, this one I can't, it's Hanishani, it's Hanishani. Yeah, yeah. I made a drama behind it. Yeah. Then I was like, I just can't, because if I lose it, then I'll just, I'll die. Yeah. And then I lost it, and, but I didn't die. I just had to be like, okay. okay. You know, then it's another pair of, my grandmother's earrings, can't find them in the house. Can't blame anyone, didn't see anyone really doing it. But I'm just like, they were my nani's nishani, ek reh gaya. So I feel like, that same attitude has trickled down into many things. It's like, it's yeah. yes. material. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needed it. It's gone. It's gone. They bought it, it's gone. It's gone. Right. Someone did it with bad intentions. Karma will deal with karma. it. And it. But this is, honestly, that, this <clears throat> is something that gets you through life. Honestly, it sounds cliche. It is a coping mechanism, though. But it is a great one. It's I a have positive to say, one. It's yeah, a it's positive, positive one. one. Everything it, happens for like people who are negative, yeah. not negative, but yeah. struggle to see the positive sides of things. Right. They hate it when somebody says it happened for a reason. Right. Sometimes right. you have days where you're like, no, I didn't. I'm just saying that to get myself No, no, yeah. This. Sometimes I do get my... But, yeah. When I tell Aslan, there's yeah. a reason in this. He says, Mom, not now. Oh, wow. Not now. He tells you not yeah. now. Yeah. He says, not, not right now. We'll talk about it tomorrow that it'll be... All right. Maybe I'll understand it later. And inevitably we do. Yeah, yeah, but he's right. But he's right. Yeah, don't, now, yeah. don't tell me that this is this. Allow me to be upset. Yeah, then. allow me to be upset. And so I allow him to be upset, you know. Because no child and nobody wants to hear that. So what if this is happening? You have food to eat. Huh. Yeah. It's so, like, okay, okay, but I'm still in pain. Yeah, exactly. Right? 
So how come, how come you chose loss as a topic to discuss for Mashin and mm-hmm. have like on an online platform talk about loss? It is important. No one's done it. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just went through some, some stuff and I was just like sitting down and thinking uh, about it, about loss. And I was like, damn, this feels real, you know, it feels real. It's, it's painful. It's, you know, and I'm like grieving like I've lost somebody, you know, and I didn't understand that feeling. And then I started writing lots. And then I said, okay, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it, you know, and I want to get people who can talk about it because if I am someone who is so exposed, I think that I'm, I have enough exposure. I read a lot of, you know, I'm at an age where I can deal with things better. And I feel like I don't know enough about it. And I feel like I'm constantly going and, you know, typing things and reading up things. And, and again, I don't, I don't unfortunately go for therapy because I, I think some way I feel very vulnerable. So I just, I just felt that, man, but I need to talk about this with somebody and I want people to hear this and I want us to be more open about talking about this. So yeah, I just thought of sort of being vulnerable yeah. to the public. To the public. Anyway, but on that note, thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you You're so welcome. much. Thank you. Thank you.